The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, and they call me Travis McElroy. Well, my name's Griffin, and I'm here to say I forgot how to podcast in a major way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> welcome to My Three Dads, a new podcast oh, for boy. dads, about dads. Let me, okay, I, let me pitch an alternate title. Alternate title. Oh, please. Okay. Dad Vice. Advice that's not bad at no, all. No, it's actually it's not very bad. No, it's yeah. advice, it's like advice, but then I said it out loud, and it makes it sound like Miami Vice, but with dads. well, yeah, it sounds like we're talking about vice vices for dads, which is just like you know, so, good coke, coke for me, uh, thanks. I don't sleep anymore, so that's my dad vice. <laughs> Last, I think we should talk about, I mean, like today's first topic is just about sleeping, so I, I want to talk about how everybody slept last night. I'll start. Uh, I was at the Cincinnati Hotel, Ew. and I slept on a on a. De- I, I we ordered room service, some bread pudding, and various ice creams, and then I laid upon a feather bed uh, with my wife and child and slept eleven hours from uh, in an uninterrupted <laughs> block from ten p.m. That bread to pudding nine a.m. High, you were just coasting so, on that pud. I think that's an experience you guys can both relate to, just sleeping 11 hours. Mm. Uh, I was curious how you guys slept last night. Mm. Well, Justin, I'll tell you. Last night, I slept for nine uninterrupted hours because my wife is a goddamn saint. Whoa. And we have been we have been trading off every other night. So actually, night before last, I slept for a total of two hours. Last nice. night, I slept for nine hours. Three nights ago, nine hours. I've had this real roller coaster sleep schedule that is fucking up my body. I went to bed at 10 and at 11, I got a text from my baby that was like, You up? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, fourth meal. Yo, dad, yeah. dad's yeah, fourth you meal. Up. It happened again. It happened again. <laughs> right, in the, right in my shorts. Hey, big, hey, big update. You up? I got you, legs. I what? Got, yeah, yeah I have legs. Out. Yeah, it's crazy. I, that is ninety percent of the sounds my baby makes. Is like whoa, whoa. or yeah. some equivalent of that. Like, have you seen this? I think it's called a hand. Like that idea. Just she won't shut up about it. About two o'clock in the morning. So and then I got a text at midnight that was like, "Hey, I know I just woke you up, but there's another. I got. I thought of another thing. Like I, I want to tell you about the <laughs> womb. It was great in there. It's super cool in there. Can you try to recreate that environment for me? And if you recreate it with without like landing it right within like 99 percent accuracy i will scream at you i will scream at you and i'll scream at i will scream at mom forever um no i slept great it's hard <laughs> sometimes my baby wakes up at like seven fifteen, and i really want to sleep till seven thirty. Mm. so it's really difficult Justin uh, Tyler, I have, I have been in your home when your child was screaming. I don't want to hear this bullshit from you. Those I are the know. old days, Travis. It's cu- I'm on Easy Street now. Okay. But I'll get there, too. This attitude of yours as though you can't remember what it was like to not sleep great. I won't stand for it. Yeah, sir. no, it's not a good character. No, I. Uh, this is my new character uh, that I'm going with. Uh, Shot you know, and the Freud? Secret. Here's the secret. <laughs> Here's Scott the secret. and Freuda. <laughs> the secret is that I hired uh, Muldoon from Jurassic Park to come in and shoot her <laughs> with a drink dart every Let night. Go. He's a, she's now she is learning how to open doors. That part is true. Oh, that's so scary. Muldoon does have a little oh, no. bit of a trouble tracking her down sometimes, and she's hunting in packs with my cats. So that that's another one that is difficult. But he does come in, just trank her every night. She goes down. Real, I mean, we'll do her book. We do the book in bed. And yeah, the but that never, that's never enough. That's never enough because then we have to call Muldoon. We need that raptor. To come over. That raptor cocktail. I'll tell you what, though. That's the trade off. Is my baby owns my ass and Rachel's ass 
from during the night times. But during the day times, it's like, what do you want to watch, baby? Because I hope it's Terrace House because that's what we're fucking watching. What do you want? You want to watch Friday Night Lights? Oh, you don't get a vote because you can't like do anything or say anything about it. But you have the opposite, I feel like, where it's like, what do you want to watch, Charlie? And it's like, oh, damn. Pee Wee's Christmas special again. Okay, all right, all right, yeah. Put that that's bad a bad boy example because that's, that's like, a bad example without rules. But I we will watched say, it. We watched it three times while I was in town for the TV show, and I love that special. But you can only laugh at the magic screen as my cousin so many times. And it should be clear when Griffin says when we were in, in town shooting, it was September, <laughs> so we were <laughs> jumping the gun okay, a little bit. Well, that's a little weird. I actually a uh, big thank you to a sleepless night with my child. I played her, uh, you know, like sound making mobile. And it reminded me of the theme music from Dark Cloud. And then I found that Dark Cloud was available on the PlayStation 4 store. Bye, bye, Travis. There That's you go. That's what I've been doing. Goodbye, Whoosh. everybody. I just remember Dark Cloud existed. Um, uh, that's or uh, do we? What else do we do on this one? It's not going to be all dad stuff. I know that there's probably legitimate fear that it's going to be all dad stuff. It's really it's not going to be all dad stuff because I'm be. honestly I'm over it. So like I've moved way on. So and it's I'm not gonna way be all in denial stuff. about it. I'm trying real hard to pretend like I don't have a kid and like I can't sure. see her right now, so Great. she doesn't exist. Sure. Yeah, so both true. of you are having some object permanence issues. Yeah. Um, um, I'm leaning way into it, baby. Pass me that fucking Bud Light. Junk, 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 One more. Uh, <laughs> That's one not more. just the theme song to Home Improvement. And a lot of people don't know this, but anytime Tim Allen's involved in a project <laughs> and he plays a dad, then that has to be the theme song for it. It's, and he wrote it. Um, Obviously, it, that was not the work of a master composer who's like, well, no. "All right, let me show you this fucking, let me show you this bar, this this sheet music, and the notes just go down, and then there's an uh, at the end of it." Uh, just one more quick dad story. Oh, uh, we were visiting Travis and Teresa and his baby BB, uh, and the highlight of the trip for me is I taught Charlie how to say she was going to kick Travis's ass. Oh, good. And she just, <laughs> She just followed Travis around the apartment saying, I'm going to kick your ass. Yeah, very eloquently, too. Like, this was not, yeah. like, cute baby speak. She looked at me dead in the eye and was like, I am going to kick your ass. It was and very now, intimidating. The two are so tied in their house that when we got home, uh, we said, did you have a good time visiting uh, with baby BB? And she said, yeah. And she said, and and, and we said, and Aunt Teresa? And she said, yeah. And we said, and Uncle Travis? And she said, I'm going to kick his ass. She's nice. going to yeah. try. She can fucking try. I'm way bigger than her. Travis is a big man. I want to teach her Cross Maga. Um, to try to kick your ass. She I also, also want- spent the whole time just so that there is benefit to the dad stories. She also kept like laying a hand on my baby and saying, so cute. It was great. She loves Mom, baby BB very much. I'm going to kick your daddy's ass. Yeah, that was <laughs> weird. That was a bit of a turnoff. Here comes I, our, our first question. I, well, oh, I want to say real quick, because I wasn't here last week. We had a best of thank, thanks to everybody for the well wishes. We had, we had a baby um, on Black Friday, and everybody's doing really well. So, And a lot of people t- sent some nice tweets and messages and some nice stuff to our P.O. box, and we really appreciate it. So thanks, y'all. Here comes our first question. My sister thinks it's normal to use the term lovers in uh to refer to a couple in casual conversation Mm. our friend and i think this is pretty super gross how can we explain to her how nasty the word lovers (laughs) is that's from off put in the oc is your sister the like i think it was oh who is the woman who did the snl bit with will ferrell where they were yeah, Rachel Dratch. Is that what that's what we're dealing with? Like the whole premise of that. We all we all went we all lived through the '90s and early thousands, right? Like we all saw that sketch. Like well, we Griffin, understand that it's all off of the us table. Did. You realize there's people that exist right now who are 16 who don't remember oh, yeah. anything before 2000, right? Shit, that's a fair point. Um, it's unacceptable. You can't. You simply can't. Because you say lovers, and lovers means one thing, and that is that they. Fuck Do it. all the time. Yeah, and the it's only like, way you get to use that is if you see two people casually fucking each other. Then you can say, look at those lovers. Otherwise, you are assuming. It's not just that. It's an active, it's an active like, descriptor, right? Like, if I go to a barber shop and I see a man or a woman cutting some hair, say that there's a barber. If I a lover and it suggests like this Wait, person this person does it like it's their job. These two people do Wait. it like it's their job. Wait, I'm gonna stop you, Griffin, though, because that would imply that if you saw him anywhere else, 
he ceases to be a barber unless well, he is barbering. No, if I've seen them barber, then I know. I've classified but it, them. But what Griffin's saying is not that he is forever cutting hair. It's that he, no. had, he has achieved a level to where he can be called that as a profession. I, I seen it. You're a barber. Don't try and disguise it. Lovers means like, uh, hi, this is, you might as well say like, this, these are my friends, uh, you know, Derek and Michael. They bone. That's what's up. Bone. That's what's up. I'm actually on the other side of this. I've reached a, a time in my life where I'm old and irrelevant. And really the only way that I can try to get the upper hand in conversation, like I can't tell people about the new Weekend album because I haven't heard it, but I can use uncomfortable words to try to set them off to try to get the power balance back into my in, into to my level. Do you, Do you remember? What's, you know what's interesting about this to me? It just occurred to me, right? Griffin and I, at least, are on the same page that lovers is weird, right? I'm going to add one word to it that's going to change the way you feel about that. You ready? Mm. Young lovers. No, bud. Really? Okay, see, I'm on the side of using young lovers as like a cute springtime Twitter-pated all befuddled about one another. You look at those young lovers out for a stroll through the park. I don't think saying look at those young lovers implies like... (laughs) No, bud. No, bud. No, bud. It does. It does. No, it doesn't. No, wait. Justin, hold on. Hold on, Griffin. Excuse me one second. I'm going to talk to Justin. Justin, you have to be on my side about this. You were on board with lovers. I I was on board with lovers because it made people uncomfortable. Like, I'm... (laughs) I'm fully in the camp. Young lovers is worse because it's drawing attention to your how old you are uh, and how you're an old person who shouldn't be saying such things. I can think of a word that would go before lovers that would make it palatable, and it is um, meat. Okay. That's, I hear meat lovers, and I say, like, when, where, where? <laughs> I'm there. How much? Please no, ba- please no Canadian bacon. Please. Yeah, that's, that's just oh, ham. You can't trick me. Um, do you guys want a Yahoo? Hit me. Uh, this Yahoo was sent in, oh man, I got a lot of good ones. When you take a week off and maybe we should switch to bi-weekly like Adventure Zone because we get so much good, no, we shouldn't even joke about that. Okay, how about this one sent in by Ed Bauman? Thank you, Ed. It's Yahoo Answers user John who asks, how do I stop people on Facebook from taking credit of my food pics? (laughs) I love sharing food pics. And I am afraid people will save my pictures and pretend they made the food. How can I pr- avoid this from happening? Whoa. Hold on. There's a real Shyamalan twist in there. Yeah. Which and that is, it's not happening. It's an imaginary. It's not happening actively. He's just afraid it will happen. This is it not a happen. thing that happens. So um, here's, a, here's what you do. I'll just solve it for you. No big deal. Uh, every time you make a dish, you write your name on it and catch up. Jacob's. You make some... Make some omu rice. Oh, you're on some omu rice shit. Oh, Justin, I'm so happy that you're watching Terrace House. It you fulfills me rice. in a spiritual way. You're right. Uh, you're right. Phil's, <laughs> Phil's food picks. And I'm assuming <laughs> food is pH, just to keep, or Phil is with an F. I, mm-hmm. It's your call. And actually, uh, picks is also pH, but pronounced differently. Yeah, uh, with three X's. And you just like write Phil's food picks in ketchup on every one. So they'll never be able to take that from you. Yeah. Can we all agree that if you post a food picture, you're actually only doing that for yourself? Like, you don't actually think anyone else in the world is going to look at the food you ate and appreciate it. It's so like in a year, you can look back and be like, damn, that was a good sandwich. It's savage. No, it's savagery because like the only response I sometimes I'll post pics of Blue Apron meals that come out especially picturesque. And the only response I ever get is like, Ah, oh, fuck! I'm so hungry. Yeah, it's like, oh no, I because that will only. Yeah, I didn't mean to make you hungry. I'm sorry. I just shared this great food pic. I like, I like seeing it though. I like seeing it. I have certain friends on Instagram and coworkers that, um, you know, they live in New York and so they're eating good food all the time. And I just follow them on Instagram because it's like, whoa! I didn't even know Ron could do that. That looks good as hell. Well done. Like I think of those people in my mind, like that I don't know very well, but I follow them on Instagram and all they post is good food pics. I'm like, that's a cool person because they eat good food all the time. They are living very, very right. Do you know has the best that? You know who is the best at that? Who? Mr. Aziz Ansari. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, he's living the dream. He's, he's that always eating. food pics are on point. They're, they're very good stuff. Um, but how do I stop people on Facebook from taking credit of my food pics is the real question because I'll be honest, I've, we've all done it. I saw my friend Susan put up a pick of ribs, and I was like, my ribs. <laughs> what, you're going to need a, like a micro dot. 
like something hidden within the photo that if you zoom in 12 oh. times, like proves that it was yours. And then like, that's your secret watermark that they'll never know to remove. Or you hide something embarrassing in the background. If you know your friend, if you know your friend, um, you know, Jerrica is going to mm-hmm. steal it. Is going to steal your food pics. And she's done it before. I made a watercress salad and she stole it. And she said, this is Jerrica's watercress salad. Then you you put up a pic, a food pic, and it's like, here's some uh, turkey burgers I made. And they turned out really great. Jerrica's like, my turkey burgers. You delete your picture and then you comment on Jerrica's picture and say, like, what's that in the background? It's a little turd. Nice. <laughs> you hit a little nice. turd in the background of the picture and she didn't see it. They, she didn't do Oh, a, but uh, then her shit goes viral quite literally. Yeah. She, and she just, becomes famous. But yeah. she becomes famous? Well, I don't want her to become. No, it's, I'm just trying to teach her like a. Like a but then everyone hates stealing. her and you've ruined Jerrica's life. No, Griffin. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. You I just did. To... You did, Griffin. Her life is ruined. She can't get can't, a job now. Can't you just call out the EXIF data? Just like, I'm checking the location stamp on oh, this damn. photo, and oh, that's weird. It was taken at my Aunt Jackie's house. I didn't realize that you guys weird. were so close together. Or, that's so unfortunately, weird. Unfortunately, Justin, the problem is, is that that can be faked. You actually have to take the picture before you post it, print it out, mail it to yourself. Don't mm-hmm. open the envelope. But once you receive the envelope, don't open it. Then you can post it. And that I think that works in any court of law. You know that legally that doesn't work. It doesn't hold up in court unless you write the jig is up on the envelope. <laughs> because oh. that way, <laughs> imagine like you post a food pic that you stole and then you get an envelope in the mail. It just says the jig is up. Or like you're in a court and the judge is like, anybody have any evidence? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that's not, and then you stand up at the back of the court and you just have this huge envelope that says the jig is up. Well, like, hold on, does it. I'm going to give a little bit of change there. You have addressed the envelope to the court, to the judge. Yeah, it and says it gets the court delivered, court. <laughs> hand delivered by someone running in, going, Wait, hold on, before you rule, I do have this letter for you, judge. And P.O. It says PO box is court, CO, judge, the jig is up, colon, jig is up. evidence. <laughs> New, new shocking evidence. It's important. <laughs> you write new shocking evidence on there because you got to entice him into opening it. If it looks boring, the judge probably won't even check it yeah, out. Don't put that or resident shit on there or that judge will never open it. Love, love Reggie. Why does it say, why did you put love Reggie on the envelope? And you open <laughs> it, it's just full of like glitter, but also the picture of your food. Why does it say on the back? Why does it say MeUndies? Well, I reuse the envelope, okay? Yeah, I care nice about it's resealable. I don't know what you want from me. Why did they make hey, the MeUndies? MeUndies? Why is it resealable? I'm not hey, going to put my underpants back in there. MeUndies, I love you. You know this. I'm wearing you now, and you are literally all I own in the underwear game. You've got your underwear game so strong. Why does the package that you come in reseal? I'm not going to... I don't think I'm going to need that one again. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to... No. No. Put it, put it, you, I'm going to put you in the boo-boo box. <laughs> uh, here's another question. I just recently moved into an apartment with four other girls. While I was putting my kitchen things away on move-in day, I noticed that one of my roommates has a ridiculous amount of Cheers-themed dishware. Oh, my God. As in, they all have the Cheers TV show logo on them. <gasps> I'm not even joking. There are so many Cheers and Blazing Cuffs plates and bowls that they're taking over all of our cabinets. How can I tell my roommate I'd rather not have... Uh, I'd rather have some more conservative dishware than a full tribute to Fraser Crane. Cheerful in Columbus is who this is from, but I'm going to say a doofus. This is from a doofus. <laughs> because I would be so happy every single day of my life if everybody knew my cups because they they knew that I had Cheers uh, there, memorabilia. There is no TV show that I would I would find this an unacceptable like arrangement for like they, I cannot think like well, Boston. Okay, I have no- all, all my plates and cups have Boston legal logos on it. Never oh, seen. A I was gonna say Boston Commons. Oh shit! All of, all of them rescue nine one one. Never seen the program. I haven't seen the program. But I'll, come on over. I've got a story. It's amazing. Tell. That's I'm so jealous. What? How fantastic! That is fantastic. Okay, here's my theory as to what has happened here. This person, they went to, uh, let's say, Goodwill, and they saw, like, a Cheers mug or, mm. like, f- a set of four Cheers glasses, and they thought that was ironic to have those in their barware set. They had those at home. Then, 
grandma came over and visited. They gave them a glass, right, of water in the Cheers cup. Grandma goes, oh, they like Cheers. Like Cheers. Yeah, that's you're a no- all you're they're getting. You're a norm head too, huh? And then that's all they're getting for like the next eight Christmases. Is I all just, Cheers memorabilia. I just had a great realization. Now that um, the information about our TV show is public, we can tell this slam dunk Cheers story. Hell yeah. So we're in Boston. This isn't a great, I don't. This oh, well, is a fun, the, it's think, a fun. It's a fun story for us. I wouldn't call it a slam dunk story. Well, you haven't even heard me tell it. I, oh, I've you're got, right. You'll I do found a good the job. drama in it, and I and I can I can twist it. And say, anyway, so we're at uh, we're staying at the hotel, and we're looking for places to go nearby. And our showrunner JD Amato took a train in six hours to come to us in Boston to talk to us about the TV show because we're going to like have a meeting about what we want this TV show to be like. So JD shows up and he's like, guys, where are we going? He's from New York. He doesn't, you, you know, know the, the cool places. And Travis is like, I got a place. So we start walking uh, a lot and it is beyond sweltering. I mean, it is over 100 degrees, absolutely miserable. And we've walked maybe six blocks before Travis reveals to us that we're going to Cheers. We walk another mm, 20 minutes conservatively and we are have not we cannot find the place and we're just kind of wandering for a little while and jd says boy i hope that you guys really like cheers to make this worth it <laughs> and travis reveals that he has not actually ever watched cheers uh-huh. which which griffin echoes and then i double echo yeah i miss that no, cheers. no actually none of us have watched <laughs> cheers uh and he was very very disappointed at us uh, fast forward to us actually finding Cheers, and we go downstairs, and it was too crowded, so we stole a pin and left they and said, ate at a pizza place. They said, it's a 100-hour wait, and I said, what's my name? And they said, I don't know, and I said, fuck you, bye. <laughs> but we did get our picture in front of Cheers. They um, do They do have a person there that takes your name to put in your reservation. That must be um, the worst job <laughs> on planet Earth. You are hearing this uh, name, please. Uh, don't you know it already? <laughs> like every, like literally 20 times a day. That's that person's entire existence. Oh, that's worse. I'd rather, I'd rather clean the shitters at Cheers than be the person who greets people I don't know, there. Justin. There, someone every day is destroying <laughs> Wrecking the Cheers. Are you shitters. kidding me? <laughs> this place, this really? place is an iconic TV landmark. Kadoosh. <laughs> I've been saving up my dumb skis all week for Cheers, Matthew. <laughs> you never think that when people yell Norm, it may be a warning that he's about to go in there and just strip mine the potty in a really savage way. He's had a long work day and he's just gonna he's just gonna have a, a terrible, terrible episode in there every day. I'm gonna go to, um, this later this year, me and my wife are taking a trip to Seattle. I'm gonna shoot a Duke in the Gray's Anatomy Hospital. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I've been I shot Dukes in major landmarks in all fifty of these American <laughs> states. I I couldn't get in the San Francisco house from from fucking Full House, but I sure <laughs> did it in the backyard. Hey, you know the me co-ed and bathroom. Comet both shit in the backyard. <laughs> you know the co-ed a- bathroom in Ally McBeal? Yep, dumped in it. <laughs> dumped there. Name dumped a bathroom there. in a TV show. I'll tell you if I dumped there. I dumped in John Adams High. I dumped at Bayside. <laughs> I dumped it. I dumped in two Tardises. <laughs> two of them. <laughs> two, two of them. them. <laughs> fucking two fucking them. Capaldi. Best day of my life. Dumped in Doctor Number Two's Tardis. It was great. felt real good. Carolyn was in the city, but Devin was in the shitter, and he had his way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was inside Veronica's closet. I took a dump in it. I left a major Torkelson in that. Growing pains. I hear you, my man. I had some of my own in there. More like, more like going pains because uh, I ate a lot of roughage. <laughs> this is my new favorite character. <laughs> hey, guys, good news. The Patty Duke show writes itself. <laughs> I left a dirty little liar lying right on the floor. Dear Matt Groening, I have a weird request for you. I need you to draw me. I need this, please, please. <laughs> this is this will be my this is my white whale. Oh shit. Um, another Yahoo. Yes, please. 
Do you uh, think the third rock from the sun toilet flush is weird? Like all space and alien and stuff? Oh, hell yeah, dude. That show fucking is so funny. <laughs> Um, here's a, here's a good Yahoo and it was sent in by Morgan, uh, Morgan Davey. Keep it wavy, Morgan Davey. Thank you. It's Yahoo Answers user. Wonder Bob asks, I need to fake like I've smoked pot before. Mm-hmm. Here's the sitch. I'm going to hang out with my friend tomorrow. He's a bit of a stoner. He's under the impression that I'm a regular smoker of pot. I am not, but in all likelihood, I will smoke pot at his house tomorrow. So I need to be able to act like I do it regularly. Help. Uh, first of all, I'm glad you came to us. You... Th- don't 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 weed don't. weed is not for mead is what they tell you to say um how do you pretend like oh this oh this good this good thing <laughs> Thank, oh this stuff oh thanks how do i start it just kidding i know how to start it you rub- <laughs> know what the you know what the thing is about that the best thing about this is that when it comes to weed, as I as it's been explained to me by many young people, because I I uh, wouldn't know. Yeah, like um, from co- uh, like comedy movies, like as, comedy I'll movies see and do it such, and and you know pamphlets I've read. Um, is that they, it's so, there's so many different uh, I believe it's called strains, different varieties, mm. um, and different ways that people smoke them. That like all you have to say is like, oh, how do you do it? Oh. Oh, interesting. Not, I swear. That's not what I learned. No. Oh, I rub it I, I rub I, it on my fucking eyes. So I I put a uh, I put a stick on the end and rub it back and forth real fast, like on Survivor when they're trying to start a fire. Is that that's not, how I kinda get it going. Like, is that I'm, not what you do? In those scenes oh. where they smoke weed on Survivor. Because the, the fact of the matter is everybody's self conscious about how they smoke weed. Everybody. <laughs> Even like the person who's done it a bajillion times. Uh, I think that you're probably wild I think that may be the dumbest thing you've ever yeah, seen. You don't think that everyone you don't think that everyone who has ever smoked weed is constantly looking for a better way to do it? YouTube.com. Going right now. You're coming with me, Travis. <laughs> um, cool weed tricks. <laughs> Okay, Results. let me rephrase. Ninety-eight percent of the people Six, who smoke weed are constantly. Sixty-six thousand five hundred people are saying, "Check out my good stuff." Okay, sixty-six thousand five hundred people. That can't be all the people. A using lot of these weed. are compilations. Wait, so or inflate is that it? number. You, okay. I have news for you, Travis. If people who are smoking weed are regularly worry, spending that time worrying about how they're smoking it, they're smoking very bad marijuana, and they should probably get some different ones. Because as far as I understand, you're smoking weed to do exactly the opposite of what you're describing. Yes, Justin, because no one's ever smoked weed and then gotten nervous. Come on. No, I'm not saying I'm not saying nervous. I'm saying that like what you said is a ludicrous thing that like people like people who smoke weed a lot are like I know I could be doing this better anyway. Well, like I said, I've never done it before because I'm a good go boy. Yeah. Um and not me if you're I'm listening. Afraid of that. I've I've never. I'm afraid of this stuff. Yeah, it's bad for me is what I What heard. if I die I, from I using just it. assume that everyone must be trying to do it better. Um, or else, why would they keep doing it? Doesn't pri- aren't they trying to master it? Like uh, uh, you know, like that ten thousand hours Malcolm Gladwell shit. Everybody Malcolm smokes weed to get better at it. You guys also look at Malcolm Gladwell and just think like, I oh, bet yeah. he parties. I bet he oh, parties. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, he's an outlier. I, if you know what I mean. I also like. It's a criminal crime. What? what? It's a cr- it's a criminal crime to do it. Not everywhere. Not for everybody. It's, sh- I mean, it is for me, so it should be for everybody, but that's beside the point. But, like, I don't go around and, like, take other people's cars and, like, have, now I have that one. Now I have this Pontiac Grand Prix. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't walk into Burger King and take all the food in there without paying for it. I guess, so. I guess that makes sense. Although, yeah. uh, from what I understand, if I did have one of those, those goobies, then, I probably would go to Burger King and eat all the food there because of. Mm-hmm. I, I guess you get super hungry. Yeah, and then you steal a car to get to Burger King because you're so hungry from smoking the gooby. Yeah, oh. and I don't want to crash my car because I'm all goobed out. Hold on, there's somebody at the door. Oh, just. Are you sure? I just read it on. Okay. Um, guys, I just gotten an, an official note. From the president. Oh. Uh Uh-huh. And it says that we're all dads now. Okay. And it's actually legally been, it says here, legally been too long since you smoked weed. Oh, no. To be able to joke about it on your podcast and have anything that approaches 
relevance or comedy. I mean, it's just, and it's got his stamp. Uh, no, he you stamped know what? it. I, I mistake. It is from Joe Biden, which does that. Oh, tracks. that makes sense. That actually. Tracks. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. tracks. Because yeah. I was, I was thinking like President Barack Hussein Obama. A lot of people forget the Hussein support that he's busy. Like he's got mm-hmm. a lot of stuff going on right now. Because he's like, he's like scrambling to like, what can I do to like hold this thing together? But Joe, uh, Joe Bags, <laughs> Joey Bag of Donuts. You know he's. I I would expect this from him. So no more. We can't do it anymore. We can't yeah, do weed jokes here. We anymore. We actually can't. Can't do weed jokes. He says if you smoke it again, then yeah. the timer resets. Oh wait, hold but on. When you're sorry, hold on. Oh, sorry, my door. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, I got a letter from Joe Biden too. Oh it said shit. That if we ever want to do another weed question again, we'll have to do an all high episode. Oh, where we all get to okay. Well, I, have yeah. a chi- I have a child though. Listen, I do too. Listen, I'm right there with you. We're all on the same page. I don't know. This is just letting people know that maybe we need to take a weed joke break for a while. Okay, yeah, but it, we, we can't joke about weed anymore. But in like uh, in like 2022, when it's all yeah. legal. No, no, no. I'm saying like in 2022, my 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 boy, my very special boy, is going to be like. This is for him now, Henry. That was a, Daddy was joking. Daddy, Daddy was joking. It was never. It was never real. It was all for jokes for the audience. For fun. For, Daddy. for fun. Daddy's crying. just having fun. Daddy's just having fun with his friends, hon. Honey, um, <laughs> go back and watch some more uh, Barney Two, the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> the the raunchy, edgy sequel of Barney, <laughs> gritty remake of Barney that we have in the future. This is uh, this is my brother Barno. I've got a gun. <laughs> what? <laughs> Barno, no. What? Build the wall. What? Barney, you shouldn't have a gun. No, it's cool if you know how to use it. Barno, I'm Barno. telling you, man. <laughs> dig these, dig these crazy guns. <laughs> Pry, pry it out of my toughy purple talons. Uh, let's go to the oh, money wait. zone. I have somebody at my door. Oh, God almighty. Some Thai food I ordered earlier. Well, if you want to pay for it, we're going to need to go to the money zone. Uh, our first sponsor this week is Trunk Club. Travis, you always do such a good job talking about Trunk Club. Can you can you repeat the magic? Oh, do you mean tell about the best pants I've ever owned in my entire life? That's mm. the one. Here's the thing. Let me tell you a little story. No, it's not a story. That's not true. The, the story is like a thing that happened. This is more observations than anything else. If you're like me, then you're the type of person who looks at clothes and thinks, how the hell am I supposed to know what clothes are worth it? Because, yeah, there's options where I could pay, like, $100 for a shirt, but that just seems like I'm flushing my money away. I don't know anything about shirts. Well, let me tell you something. I bought some pants from Trunk Club, and they are, without a doubt, no joke, no exaggeration, no smoke, the best pants I've ever owned in my life. How many, pocket, how many pockets they got? A billion. No, like Come the on. normal amount, like five pockets. Hmm, interesting. But the thing is, is the material, the way they fit, the way they look. These are what adult jeans are. This is adult jeans. I'm wearing adult. These are adult jeans, Griffin. These okay. aren't my little boy jeans anymore. These I still are adult like my boy jeans. jeans, though. They make me feel like I can go out in the yard and play around, and I don't even <laughs> worry about it. But boy jeans aren't an everyday jean, Griffin. Sometimes you have to go to, like, I don't know, the, the store, and you want to look like an adult and not have people, like, tell you where the candy aisle is. Well, mm, that's actually Stop. a great service that they can provide for me. <laughs> <Thank> sometimes <laughs> that is actually nice. Really my boy, my boy jeans have special candy pockets, so this is actually a perfect arrangement. What you just you described. Look like you know what? In the market for a pick a mix. <laughs> what you should do? Way. What you got to do then is you got to go to Trunk Club and you need to talk to your personal stylist at Trunk Club and say, "I'm looking for a jean I can wear to the candy aisle of the grocery store," and I guarantee you they will give you that perfect jean. Maybe it's got lollies already stuck to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and and they so have people like, know you're a sugar head <laughs> and big cargo pockets for putting all of your bridge mix. Yeah. Hey, uh, Travis, I love you. That's theft, my dude. No, no, no. Once you buy it, Justin, and then you just oh, okay. eat out of the pockets all day. Okay. <laughs> Those are your all day snack pants. <laughs> so, oh, these are McKinley pants. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go to trunkclub.com/slash my brother. You're gonna type in your measurements. You're gonna share your likes, dislikes. 
and, you know, talk about the things that you need the clothes for. And Trunk Club is going to send you a trunk of clothing straight to your door. It's going to be handpicked by your very own personal stylist. And you keep what you like and you send back what you don't and you only pay for what you keep. It's a great deal. And they're going to send you amazing stuff. I've done it. Justin's done it. Um, and, and you end up with amazing clothes that enter the rotation as your favorite stuff. And the best thing is it's not a subscription service. It's not something that you have to worry about being charged for every month. You only pay for it when you do it, and you only do it when you need it. So go to trunkclub.com slash mybrother and check it out. And uh, if you're in Dallas, New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, D.C., or Charleston, South Carolina, you can go into one of their clubhouses and work with the stylist right there in person, try on the clothes right there, and have a very special clothing experience. Yeah, so go to go to trunkclub.com uh, slash my brother and get on board. I want to tell you about Warby Parker. Uh, we are also sponsored in part this week by Warby Parker. It's a new concept in eyewear. You've probably heard of what they do. Uh, it's the best. It's just the best way to buy uh, fashion forward affordable glasses. Uh, you go online. You pick out. Uh, you pick out five pairs of glasses, and they ship these frames. Uh, to your home as part of the the, the home try on program, um, these prescription glasses start at ninety five bucks, including lenses, uh, and you can get both glasses and sunglasses. Uh, so they they send you five frames, you put them on, you see what works, see what doesn't, and then uh, you you get to keep the ones that you that you like. Um, and it's it's really fast. It's uh, you get a prepaid package. It's easy to to ship back the the ones that you don't want. Uh, and they have really slick looking sunglasses. Not only that, for every pair of sunglasses that are sold, they distribute a pair of glasses to someone in need. Um, so it's a really it's a really cool company. And again, uh, you can get UV protected sunglasses starting at ninety five bucks, uh, or you can get those sunglasses with a prescription for one hundred and seventy five bucks uh, as as the the minimum price there. Um, uh, but if you go to warbyparker dot com slash my brother, all one word, uh, you can order your your free home try ons today. You get uh, five frames to try on. You mail the frames back. You choose your favorite pair and uh, have your prescription added and order. It's completely risk-free with free shipping all around. Just go to warbyparker.com slash mybrother, all one word, to begin your free home try-on experience today. Justin, did you laugh in the middle of that because you read on to our Jumbotrons? Uh, No, I don't ever read ahead. I just take it as it comes, you know? Okay. Play it as it lies. Because Uh, I was reading them and appreciating them immensely. Okay. Uh, first off, I just want to say all we put uh jumbotrons for 2017 for my brother, my brother, me, oh and the Adventure God. Zone on sale, and they all sold out. I think the first day. So you're, you're all me. incredible. Yeah, they're all sold out. So like, thank you so much for that. That's fantastic. So we don't deserve you as always. No, no new information there. Uh, this first message is for 30 year old Lizzie, and it's from. 29-year-old Lizzie. So dope. It says, hey, Lizzie, it's me, past Lizzie. I know you're 30, and you're mourning the slow and inevitable loss of youth, but it's okay. You're still kind of young. If you're a hobbit, you wouldn't have even come of age yet. In your 30th year, you'll graduate, get married, you'll uh, up your max fund donation. Oh, thank you. And you'll continue to be kick-ass. P.S. I hate you, Ron. Uh, and congratulations to 30-year-old Lizzie. She's been kicking it that way since the first or second week of august which is a little suspect if that's your birthday lizzie i think you probably know when that falls you could probably zero in you could probably zero (laughs) in a little bit more specifically liz but maybe in the year 30 you'll be a little bit more punctual and you'll finally lock down when your birthday is but happy birthday to you lizzie um Um, oh you're gonna do this next one well you guys did both of the ads hell yeah dude let her rip yeah here it comes i got a message for dan craig and it's from cat comfort and the message is this, Dan O, super sorry I didn't stop in Chicago that last time I drove through Illinois. <laughs> I was like right there, and I just kept on trucking. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> but for realsies, thanks for being my very great pal for almost 20 years. Love, Katrinka. And that is very... I get it. I love that. You don't want to fuck with the Dan Ryan Expressway. You get, you're get you trucking through Illinois. You're like, I'm going to make a pit stop in Chicago. That's a 14-hour trip with all the traffic on I-94. No thanks, I say. No thank you. I mean, I'll, I'll so, go. I want a chili dog as much as the next guy. I'd love to get some of that deep dish. But no way. It's not worth it. 
They should have a deep dish place on the highway that you could just drive through. You should be able to it. roll your fucking window it. down on the Dan Ryan Expressway and they just <laughs> launch one right through the old fucking passenger side. I'm Brian. And I'm Aaron. And we host Throwing Shade, a political comedy podcast that's somehow horribly offensive and socially conscious. If you want to know what it sounds like if the news drank straight vodka, check us out on Thursdays on Max Fun. And we're the first Max Fun podcast to be turned into a TV show. So check that out January 17th on TV Land. Throwing Shade. Politics. Pop culture. Wigs for days. Do you guys want to, or did we just do a Yahoo? I think it's we time just for a regular a question. Yeah, yeah, so regular question. Here it come. Badging past security today. A security guard old lady commented, "You always look sad." <laughs> <laughs> I had no response to this, so I just shook my head and kept going. I'm not entirely sure I've ever been seen this person before. <laughs> Was there a better way I should have handled this? That's for just trying to get to my workplace in Tucson. Oh. Man, <laughs> the best way is just your son. I'll have your job. <laughs> Keep walking. Please. I have seen trailers. Have you guys seen these trailers? For I think it's a Will Smith movie, and he gets visited by g- these ghosts. But one of them's like death, and one of them's like love. One of them's like God or whatever. But one of them is an uh, one. I think it's the, called like collateral happiness or something like that. Some collateral ex- yeah, accidental, yes, yes, yes. maybe hap- joy. Um, maybe it's one of those situations where it's just sort of uh, like an avatar of a like a particular virtue or god or something like that. And it's just like buck up. I buck actually, up, I'm, I'm going to take your example one step further, Griffin, and say that this person is that classic example of like in a movie preview mm. where they have that one line that kind of conveys to the audience everything they need to know about that character. Where it's I, just like, you're always so stressed. When are you going to take time for you? Yeah, you know? that's a good point, Trev. Was this like exposition? Mm-hmm. Were you in the middle of exposition about your character for a movie that's being filmed about you in secret? I, I watched While You Were Sleeping last night, and I'm pretty sure this person was in the movie. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Did you just do that ironically because you were not sleeping because of the baby? <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to watch something with sleeping in the title. Just so, <laughs> just so, just to remember fucking, what it was like when you were sleeping. I watched that movie. <laughs> Sleepless and I just, in Seattle? No, thank you. Got a belly no, full you. of that. I would rather watch Peter Gallagher in a fucking coma. <laughs> Push me on the train tracks, my love. <laughs> Please. Wait, hold on. I don't think Sandra Bullock pushes Peter Gallagher onto the train track so she can pretend to be. I haven't seen it in a while, but I don't think she does it. Goes, this will do it. You're probably one of the few people that ever watched that film, and I, Peter Gallagher, enviously in his coma bed, like, oh huh. god, that would be nice. so choice, so dope, <laughs> real nice. Just snoozing whatever you want, huh? Because he wakes up and he wakes up, and Sandra Bullock's his fiance. And he's and in the movie he's like I don't know this I don't remember any of this happening I don't remember this being my life, but it's like Peter Gallagher you just got like a bunch of sleep and you woke up <laughs> and you're married to to Sandy. Ah, <sighs> good, good flick though. Good, good flick, flick though. Good Peter flick, Gallagher. Good he flick, does, she doesn't. Flick. We're supposed to Bill be Pullman. fucking rooting Bill for Pullman. Bill, what a for A-level Bill Pullman. Cat. No thanks. Uh, oh, she ended up with Bill Pullman. Everything's okay. She could have Pete Gallagher, and she no, okay. Him. Listen, but she didn't, Griffin. She didn't know Pete Gallagher. She got to know Bill Pullman. That's the whole point. She, she knew. She knew that. He, she fantasy. knew he had one nut. What else do you need? <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in so long. Yeah, it's like, it, it gets wild. <laughs> <laughs> she pushes a man onto a fucking train track. She and, doesn't push him, Griffin. Yeah, and there's a few story beats that involve his nut. It's <laughs> <This> one nut. <laughs> it resolves con- his one nut actually resolves a conflict in the first act. This is not a joke. Um, what was the question? Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, the you old you said you always look sad. Yeah, this stinks. I don't. I don't think uh I don't think this is a good thing to say to anybody. Hey, you no, always I don't look think sad. You say that. Cool. I don't know what to do with that information. This uh, this falls under the same like if anyone ever says to another human being like you should smile more, like this kind of like we all just need to stop commenting on the facial expressions made by other people because for all you know that person is just really contemplative like all the time. 
but like, but also more importantly, fuck you. Yeah. Also that, like, you don't get to dictate how anyone else should look ever. That idea of like, if I want to frown all the time, and like, that's my deal. Like, um, go fuck yourself. Unless, unless, unless this person's got touched by an angel. Oh, we're in a okay. Roma Downey situation. You've never seen this security guard mm-hmm. before. Mm. So either it's her first day, and you said she's an old, uh, what, uh, old old lady. Um, And if we take that, like, this is like an 85-year-old woman. Angel. Angel, right? She's not starting a new career in security guard. You know what I mean? Like, put the fucking clues together. You she's gotta, if you want to, if you want to spot an angel... Mm-hmm. You gotta, you gotta follow the clues because they're wily. Yeah. So all old people are angels. Yes. No, I'm saying yes. It, it, in if you see an old se- person and they're not at church, <laughs> then they're then they're probably an angel. Ironically, you know. And while you were sleeping, <laughs> there's a there's another story beat where there is a, she gets into Peter Gallagher's nice apartment and the doorman is an old man. And he's mm-hmm. like, I don't know, I don't know you. Get the fuck out of here. And first of all, it's like, don't be mean to Sandra Bullock. Um, but he, it, she's like, oh, I'm Peter Gallagher's fiance. And the doorman is like, oh, sorry, I'm new. So like, now I'm starting to put the clues together. This is another old person starting a new career in the security industry. I'm thinking that the, I'm thinking we got a fucking email, Stranger Than Fiction style, from characters in the movies uh, while you were sleeping. You think that we're getting emailed by the characters in the movie? Well, of all the podcasts, you're if you're going to email one podcast, I definitely would go to ours. If I was a character while you were sleeping, I would email our podcast. <laughs> I really like Sleepy Griffin a lot. They're just they're just scrolling through the iTunes charts. They go way past the twenties and they duck into the thirties, and they're like, mm, "I think I found my one." And they're like, "What's Chris Hardwick up to?" No, no, uh, Ferris, he never, no he's no. way too popular. No, <laughs> two dumb queens. No, no. Yeah, who no, are these no. assholes? Hmm, my brother, my brother, <laughs> and me. You say oh. they'll free me from this celluloid prison. <laughs> The description of their show sounds like the ramblings of a madman. I think I'm going to just go ahead and email these brothers I've never heard of before. It's, and tr- that's like a message. Like you would be, be, you would have better luck writing a note to Mark Marin and throwing it into the ocean, like of getting your your message out there. It's listen, such a random play. Listen, Peter Boyle, we lost him ten years ago. Mm-hmm. His ghost is inside of while you were sleeping, and it listens to podcasts. And he's a big fan, and he sent me an email last night. Read between the lines. Read Justin. between the fucking lines, Justin. So I think we all know that that's the situation. Let's move on um, to a good Yahoo. Or should we just do another question? We got let's do another question. We got so yeah. many questions. Hey, brothers, three. I went to a restaurant with my family today, but didn't order anything because I wasn't very hungry. The waiter seemed very concerned with this. He kept asking if I was sure if I wanted to keep my menu and order later and whatnot. I said no. I'm fine with just water. Ugh. As he checked up on us while we were getting ready to leave, he offered me a ginger ale to go to help me feel better. I'm not sick or anything, but I did accept the offer, nodding and smiling as he wished for me to get better soon. <laughs> Two questions. Am I good? And does my disheveled nature really look that pathetic? And that's from Pale and Mild in okay. Portland, Maine. Okay, this is my shit. This, this is a perfect follow-up to that last question. Because this person was like, are you okay? You look hung- You look sick. No, I'm fine. Are you sure you look sick? No, I'm telling you, I'm good. Okay, here's a thing I'm going to give you to fix this perceived problem. If this security guard had been like, you always look sad, here's a pack of Pokemon cards. That would be a fucking <laughs> horse of a different color entirely. <laughs> I'm going to sell it to you for half a sticker price. Um, There might be like a hollow foil in there. You don't fucking know. Gut check. Gut check. Um, How how did, how does this, how does this waiter's activities or wait, waiter? Yes. How did, how did their activities treat you? Their decisions treat you? Because I think this is a, I think this is a nice little gesture. Well, there's, there's, okay. I'll tell you this, Griffin. It is either a nice little gesture or it is someone who sees a potential like seat filler who's not spending money that they would get a tip then from. Then why the, why the ginger ale? Because they're trying to do something nice for the table to engender themselves like with the table. So the people were like, that waiter was so nice and conscientious and really cared about. It. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm saying this is a conscientious waiter who's trying to do right 
by the table. It's a really uh, cynical way to look at this. Yeah, well, I've, I've worked in a lot of restaurants. And, I have to and say you this. you do nice things. In terms of are you good, someone offered you a ginger ale and you took it. Listen, I've been alive for 36 years. I cannot count any – I cannot summon any moments where if someone had been like, hey – do you want a tall frosty ginger ale to go? I, I would have said, no, I don't think I do want that because I use, yeah, pretty much all the time. Like if I had a cold ginger ale right now to mm. just enjoy at my leisure, that would go down Shit, that so sounds good. good. Okay, but can we take a side note too? Because Justin, you're 100% right. I cannot remember a time in my life in which I thought I needed a ginger ale until someone offered it to me, be it a flight attendant or a waiter. And only then did I realize, yes, exactly what I, I need, need this in this badly. moment. Yeah. Is a ginger ale. Unless it's and you fucking... can never find it when you need it. Um, if you no. want a ginger ale, there's not going to be any around. So you just got to take it when it comes. Unless it's a Canada dry. And you say, thank you for the glass. And you pick it up and you walk to the bathroom and you pour it in the toilet. <laughs> you pour it in the <laughs> toilet or the urinal or the sink or the garbage can. Just like get rid of it. Is this that Austin snobbery I've been hearing about? The Austin no, ginger it's just like that shit, is, that shit doesn't taste like ginger at all. Are Give you me a fucking... Seagrams or nothing? Seagrams or a, a Ver- Verner's? Uh, mm-hmm. is, well, is good shit. Verner's is a little too sharp for me. I want it spicy. Give me that spice. It's a, a spice. little too much spice for me. See, I want that. The, that ginger is a spice. Canada Dry is the only one where I can find it and diet, and I'm drinking it every single night with, Not, with uh, brandy. So I need diet. I don't need the extra cacaos. I'm That's, actually right now having a ginger beer and whiskey and bourbon. Oh. And ginger beer might be what I've been craving all these years, but I've been having a ginger rail, which now I say it out loud. Is a ginger rail a form of ginger beer? Discuss. Is there this a is ginger a, no, lager? No, this is bad. It's, I, first of all, no? no. And second of all, I don't want to discuss. It's, this is dead that, air. This is no, dead that, air. That, that angel is listening right now, and she's just like, I've made a huge mistake. Peter, Peter Boyle <laughs> is like, mm, unsubscribe. I'm going to go get a fucking deep dish pizza. <laughs> I don't care if they read my shit or not. I hate this. Uh, do you Peter, Boyle's, question? Peter Boyle's role in that movie, by the way, is I think okay. he's like a grandpa of Peter Gallagher. Um... And he fucking knows. Like, he knows the secret that they're not really engaged. And he lets it go so far. They, like, they like are about to get married. And Peter Boyle's, like, sitting there knowing this dark secret. And it's like, say something, Peter. And he doesn't. Because he loves those young lovers, Griffin. He just likes seeing oh, you the tried young to, love. You tried young to lovers. sneak it in there, huh? Young lovers getting, getting married. I have a good Yahoo, and I'd like to do it. Okay. It's from uh, Nicholas Potter sent this one in. Thank you, Nicholas. It's an anonymous user, but we're going to call him Peter Boyle. What's up, buddy? Um, thanks for thanks for listening. Were podcasts around in 2006? They were. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this uh, Peter Boyle asks, how dangerous would I be in a fight? Just for the fun of it. How dangerous do you think I would be? Here are some tips. I'm going to get what? a big drink of water because this is going to be a lot. Here are some tips. Mm. Some some stats. Okay, so let's divide this in some factors first. Speed, strict, and strategy. What? I think strict is strength? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I'm very fast, and I'm good on reflexes. As for my strength, I can do 50 push-ups without doing workout for a while. When I used to work out, I was able to do 80, even a 100 once. Mm-hmm. And as for my strategy, in fighting, the objective is simple. Put the enemy on the floor. To mm-hmm. me, there are no rules in fighting unless it is an official fight like boxing. Mm-hmm. But, if it's n- it, but if it's not, mm-hmm. then, I, then I ain't got no rules. Mm-hmm. I'll try to get a hot... The opponent furs like, let what? him th- let him throw first punch, duck, punch him in the gut at max strength, and then get right next to him and kick on the side of his leg, breaking or dislocating his knee. Then it's a punch on the back of the head and even kicking to the ground if needed. And last but not least, kicking in the ribs. Of course, there are so many ways this could go wrong, but it's an example. Okay, I wait, rarely have I, I rarely have been in fights. Okay, but I have, thank you. Yes, all right. But I have tough a lot about it, and so I somehow <laughs> mentalized for it. Uh, of course, I will still be nervous, but if I decide not to hesitate, then <laughs> I won't. So yeah, pretty much is as soon as I manage to buy myself some time after giving a hit, 
it'll aim for the weak spots and make my opponent so fall wait to that the was ground. like a sidebar mm. between <laughs> so anyway where was i in so my, yeah pretty much right. oh. pretty much as soon as i beat i managed to buy myself some time after getting a hit a lane for the weak spots and try to make my opponent fall to the ground and beat them up as for weapons that's for another question so what do you think <laughs> update oh i forgot to mention my abs are really hard so if i'm forcing them i can take a punch to them it's like having armor Huh. <laughs> it's not, really not. It's really not. Unless that's like so good, your abs are so good against like knives. Like if they're that hard. I um, want to watch a mm, video. No, don't. I don't want to watch person, some fight video of this person and this specific person though. Like walking up to a fight once they've gotten over their hesitation of worry. I wish them the best. Like, I wish them the best. Well, go with Griffin, God. No, I'm... go with go with God. Stand your truth. I don't want to watch this person fight. I don't want to watch two people fight as much as, like, everybody on Facebook is like, watch these two people fight. At the, I'm like, Can no, I, I don't want to see you? two people fight. Griffin, hear me out. Hear me out. There is a specific line in this that makes me want to watch it. And that is when they say, when they throw a punch, I'll duck. Yeah, well, that's the first step. <laughs> that that's line, a, that's like a really amazing. Like, oh no, I have a plan for punches. No, I, I know. I, have, I've, I know what you're thinking. What if they punch you? Well, let me stop you there because I have a strategy for if they punch me, I just won't let them. I just, I my just head won't. won't be there. They'll see my head there, but then a split second later, my head will be down. How, how can you punch what you can't see? <laughs> Oh, punches? No, not an ish. How can you? Punch? I don't know how people keep losing fights. Honestly, just don't let them. Just if you're don't let them punch, punch you. Just don't let them punch you. This guy was watching boxing matches. Just like, what are you doing? No, what no, is, your head was up and should be down. I don't want this guy to get into a fight. I just want him to be in the sidelines in a new Rocky movie. I want him to be ringside. <laughs> hey, Rock, he put. You gotta move. Listen, <laughs> listen. If he's going for a punch, you gotta move that noggin, my man. <laughs> down, to punch you. No, if down. He th- if he gets enough of those punches in, you're gonna lose the boxing fight. No, and flex the f- your abs. The flex other co- them. The other coach is like, "Oh shit, that's a great idea." Hey, Derek, don't let him. Don't let him do it. <laughs> don't let him do it. Just move around. And the- yes. And this boxing was in. <laughs> Just when you see a punch coming, don't be there to receive it. Well, where should I be? Just any, just left or right or down or up. Jump over the any- pu- Here's my strategy. I jump over all the punches. <laughs> like Mario. Like Mario does. I'm one I'm, of the Mario brothers. I'm one of the Super Mario brothers. I'm Wa Derek, and I jump over your punches. Ha, 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 ha. na Nice try. Isn't it, isn't it a shame that if you were Mario and you wanted to apply your skills in the boxing ring, that it would ha- it would work exactly once, and then no one would ever box you again. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like you jump on somebody's head, and it does work, and it's amazing. And the refs are like, "We don't have a rule against it," mm-hmm. and you're like, "Well, I guess I'm in for a new career of boxing. No more squishing mushrooms for me." But then you try to find another opponent, and they're like, "No, I've pretty much got your number." Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to jump on my head, so I'd really rather fight anybody that, else. Honestly, that's actually Justin why he had to resort to just being a boxing referee. True. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. how that that's how that career change worked out. That's how it happened, uh, folks. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, my brother, my brother, and me. A uh, few things we want to hit on real quick. The first is. Uh, it's that time of year again. It's time for the My Brother, My Brother, and Me Angels. Uh, if you've listened to our show before in previous Candlelight seasons, uh, you know how this works. But let me give you the 30-second elevator pitch. We come from an area called Huntington, West Virginia. And in our region, there is a lot of poverty. And there are people uh, for whom the the holidays are not going to be so happy. So our local paper, the Herald Dispatch, puts together a list of people uh, with needs throughout our area. Uh, a lot of them children, uh, a lot of them adults with disabilities, uh, uh, elderly folks, whatever. Uh, people who aren't going to have a Christmas otherwise and ask for some small items that they need, toys for, for some of the kids or clothes for people who are trying to get get work, that kind can of thing. I, can I give just a quick example of a couple of the items, Juice? Cause sure, I think yeah. That, yeah, yeah. For yeah. example, people asking for help with bus passes. 
yeah. people asking for help, like with winter coats and pots and pans. Like these aren't like frivolous, like you know, wish list items. These are things that people just need a little help with, you know, to be able to get by and provide for their families and take care of themselves. So if you want to help people in our area, and it means so much to us, we we uh, we have a website now. Uh, uh, built by some some kind listeners uh, that that are uh, is really helping to uh, uh, make this process a lot more manageable. I think uh, uh, so, so. Thanks to Jeremy and Willem and and everybody who's who has helped out with with this project. Uh, it's mbmbamangels.com is the website. And here's how it works. You go to mbmbam angels. You find somebody that you want to help. You call the organization uh, to see if your I- item is still unclaimed because there are folks in our area that also see this list. So you want to make sure you're not double dipping. Um, and if you don't like calling, if you're uncomfortable with that, there are people on our Facebook group that'll do it for you if you just ask. Uh, you go there, you claim somebody, you buy the thing. You can buy it on Amazon, just have it shipped to wherever they're at. And uh, you mark them as completed, and that's done. We've had 64% of these gifts, uh, be these these stockings be filled, and that's amazing. But we really want to try to get everybody. So if you have a little time and some extra cash – oh, by the way, you can also just donate money. Um, there's some bigger ticket items that people are sort of chipping in on together. You can do that too. The details are on the website. Um, but if you can do that, it really – it will make you feel great, and it uh, really does mean a lot to people. So – that website, again, is mbmbamangels.com. So please, if you can, go uh, go help out. It means a lot. Um, uh, I, I also want to say there's uh, another opportunity for giving this holiday season. If, you, if, uh, if you're looking for other ways to help out, um, Patrick Rothfuss, who is a friend of the show, he's been on an episode before. And it's also just like super cool dude. Good dude. Uh, he started a charity called World Builders. Um, that's spearheaded by a bunch of awesome authors, and it supports Heifer International, Mercy Corps, and First Book. Uh, basically, a lot of stuff to help out, like, kids. Kids who need food, kids who need water, kids who need help uh, in learning. Um, and what you do is you go, and for every $10 you donate, you get entered into a lottery to win cool stuff. Um, so it's mutually beneficial, and you get to do a little bit of good. Um, and right now we have our own fundraising team. You can go join Team Mabim Bambino. Uh, just go to bit.ly forward slash M-B-M-B-A-M-W-B. And maybe uh, consider giving like 10 bucks and helping out. I want to beat all the other fucking teams. I do want to do that too, yes. I want to grind them down into the dirt and make them ashamed. Yeah, I want them to be embarrassed they ever wanted to help anybody. Yeah, that'll teach them. Take that, that'll you philanthropic assholes. Um, I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed. It's a wonderful album that you should go get buy it as a, a holiday present for yourself or your kin or your friends or whatever. Uh, also want to thank Maximum Fun for having us on the network. It's a really, really great network, something we're really enthusiastic about. All the shows on it are super great. You can find them all at MaximumFun.org. Uh, or if you want to listen to other podcasts with us or videos with us, uh, go to McElroyShows.com, uh, and you can find all our projects there. Uh, I also want to say two more things. One, uh, our Candlelight episode is coming up. We actually already recorded our Candlelight's live show, but because that's attached to the TV show, you won't be able to hear that for a while. So we'll still uh, record. Damn. Yeah, we'll still record a Candlelight's episode so that you have something to listen to over oh, the holidays. Beans. Oh, but beans, need, though. Oh, beans. But we need your Candlelight's questions. So make sure when you mail those in, put Candlelight's in the subject line so it's easy for us to like group those all together. Um, also, uh, we have a Facebook group, which we haven't mentioned in a while. And it, I think last time I checked, we had over 20,000 members in that Facebook group, Jesus. which is humbling. Um, so we have added some new moderators to the Facebook group to kind of help manage that. So I wanted to just say a special thank you to Rachel, Wesley, Stormy, Lucy, and Anthony for taking on roles as moderators of the group so that we don't end up with literally 1,300 people waiting uh, to be led into the group. So thank you for helping out as moderators. Uh, we, we, we done? You all want that He's final? So That's going to do it. All right. <clears throat> this final Yahoo was sent in by Shannon Cow. Thank you, Shannon. It's by Yahoo Answers user Jake McAuffel who asks, <laughs> Is a shrimp a baby lobster? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. 
This has been My Brother, My Brother, uh, Me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. Are you in need of a shakeup? Max Fun Con is our annual comedy and creativity festival, and it changes lives. Max Fun Con West returns to Lake Arrowhead next June, and Max Fun Con East is back in the Poconos next September. Tickets for both are on sale right now, and they will sell out. Visit maxfuncon.com to buy your tickets today. We can't wait to see you there. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.